Hello, Aggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Darren DiMarino, who is KO4DLN. He says he got his technician license using my videos and hopefully soon we'll use the videos I have for General and Extra. I will note that the General and Extra training videos are behind the ARRL paywall. So you will need to be a member of the ARRL, which you should be anyway. And then you can access those videos freely after that. He says, I'm stealing your idea of using a steel fence post as a mask for my vertical antenna. Okay, now remember we're dealing a technician. So we're talking here, VH, UHF, and also he's got a CB antenna up. The mast will be at the top of a 60-foot tower, providing an overall height of 70 feet, not including the length of the antennas. Live in Florida. I used to live there when I was in the Air Force. Pretty much zero feet elevation across the state. Where we lived was four feet above sea level. We were about a quarter mile from the sea. This is when I was stationed at MacDill Air Force Base. And uh, Hurricane Frederick came through and dumped a lot of rain. It, the eye was out at sea, but we had 18 inches of rain in 11 hours. And it flooded from my porch, the, the porch, all the way across the street to the neighbor's porch. It was solid water. If it had gone any higher, we would have had water in the house. As it was, we had a little bit of leakage through one door, but otherwise we were fine. And Everything drained away finally and we were fine. He's trying to push VHF performance to the max. He still wants to be close to omnidirectional as the towns I'm hoping to reach are in different directions. Before we go into the details there, there is a formula that will tell you the distance to the horizon based on your height above the ground. The higher you go, the further you can see. It's a bit misleading because it assumes a perfectly flat horizon. You come pretty close to that in Florida, believe me. Having been there, I lived there. Now, note that the radio range is four-thirds of that. So you can take that number and multiply by four-thirds. That's what you can see from the top of your antenna. So it's just a, a simple line of sight range type of thing. You can look that up on the internet. Now, uh, from 70 feet, you'll get quite a bit higher than you, or quite a bit further than you would from 30 feet. So it's a great idea to raise that antenna. It will be vertically polarized, of course. You've got a trade-off. The trade-off is the height above Earth versus the losses in the coax, okay? If the coax is not very lossy, compared to other coaxes, like LMR400, RG213, RG8U, or the Messy Paolini has got nice fat coax, as, and you can get special tools from Times Microwave to put their special $25 each connectors. You've got a long cable, and you're going to have losses in it, and you can calculate those losses. And that subtracts then, the further away you put the antenna, the more losses, so the less power actually gets to the antenna. It works the other way too, received power coming down is also attenuated, okay? So you've got a trade-off you've got to make here. And there's no easy way to do that other than to, you know, if you can, try to run some numbers on the losses and so on. Now the thing about an FM signal is you've either got it or you don't. And there's a small fringe range in there where you start getting some noise in it or getting some picket fencing or some of the other things that happen to VHF signals. I want to warn you about another effect. The optimum height for an antenna is a half wavelength above ground. So for two meters, that's one meter, that's three feet. That sounds kind of weird, but at that distance, you've got one nice lobe going out toward the horizon. But as you go up in height above the optimum wavelength, the, you start getting these lobes around there. And by the time you get up to 70 feet, try this in Easy NEC Plus. Version 7 is out there now and it's free. And you'll see that you'll have a tremendous number of 
I call them bifurcations of the thing where you have nulls coming in there. And if that null happens to be in the direction of what you're trying to hit, you could have an issue. So that's another trade-off. He's asking now about if he mounts one antenna above another, there's a steel mast right next to it. Will that affect the antenna? Yes, absolutely. I would put some sort of uh, jumper. You can make this out of stainless steel. Come out about six feet or so from the mast and then put the antenna on that. Okay, and then you can put the other one above it right on top of the mast. That will reduce the effect of having it next to the mast. It will also make the antenna slightly directional in the direction opposite where the mast is. The mast will act as a bit of a reflector. Now it's not the right length obviously for a good reflector so you won't get good reflections so but it won't quite be a circular pattern okay the other question is there any advantage to running the coax inside the steel fence post mask no nah, not really my thought is that it could help protect the cable from weather and other sources damage or noise it won't perfect it from noise because what protects the inside of the cable is in fact the shield the whole point of the shield is to do just that shield the cable from either radiating from the center or reducing anything heard. So that's not gonna help you from that. Almost all cable, I would go so far as to say all cable, these days is UV resistant. So you don't have to worry about the UV. What I would do is every five feet or so, put some electrical tape, some good quality electrical tape around it. Not the stretchy stuff that sticks to itself because that comes apart in UV. But most electrical tape is not UV sensitive. Running it inside the mast is a lot of work to do that because you've got to have a hole in there where that comes out and that weakens the mast and so on. Just run it next to the mast, not going to affect anything. So there you have it. Height does matter. Okay, that's the second rule of antennas. The first rule of antennas is that everything affects everything. So you'll have to experiment a little bit with this setup, but I think you're going to have something in there that you would really like. I'm assuming that your CB antenna is a beam or something, because it also normally CB is done vertically polarized. And FM work on two meters and 70 centimeters is done vertically polarized. Now a vertically polarized antenna is unbalanced. And so you can just feed it with coax wherever the coax feed of the thing is. Your beam, of course, for or whatever you have for CB is going to be a little different. One, it is affected by the vertical mast, and second, it's inherently a balanced antenna. So you can do the RF choke type with the coiled up coax or do a one to one balance or whatever you would like in there. I hope that helps answer your questions. Darren, good luck with your project. Good luck with your studying for general. Hang in there and do it. The general license is a step up from the technician, but the extra license is several steps up in terms of difficulty. So get that general, get on the air, get lots of experience, and then go get that extra, and it will mean a lot more to you when you do it that way. If you get them all at once, you get a piece of paper say you passed. Okay, that doesn't give you the satisfaction of a year or two on HF, you really learn how bands work. HF is so much different from VHF in almost every aspect. So there you have it. If you would like to help the channel, uh, please join. You can do that right on the YouTube page there. And for very little, those who join the channel can see these videos in advance of when they're posted for everybody else. So until we next meet, 73.